The canteen's large window offered a panoramic view of Curia Trade Station. Its owner, Anka, a tall, blue-skinned Ixian, enjoyed watching the frenetic routine of the station while cleaning glasses behind the counter. Anka had already been a famous space traveler in his youth, known for his skill in piloting ships and negotiating with various alien species. Now, retired from long and tiring intergalactic travels, he enjoyed a quieter life managing his small establishment. The canteen soon began to welcome its usual morning customers. A group of Tagorian traders entered noisily, already discussing the latest market rumors, while a lone Arconian pilot calmly ordered his morning drink. Umka greeted everyone with a nod, serving the usually ordered drinks. He enjoyed observing customers and imagining the stories behind each one, fueling his adventurous spirit without leaving his seat. Suddenly, the canteen door opened with a bang, drawing everyone's attention. A strange group marched in in perfect synchronization. There were six tall aliens, with bright orange skin and horns, wearing elaborate silver ceremonial costumes. Tok Toks, Umka exclaimed in surprise. What brings you to my humble canteen? We have come to celebrate the wedding of our tribal leader Zumo and Princess Perka. The Tok Tok in front responded excitedly. We need a big party. Umka nodded, smiling. Tok Tok weddings were unique events, full of exotic colors, flavors, and sounds. It would certainly liven up what would otherwise be another monotonous day at the station. Before long, more Tok Toks arrived, carrying blaring musical instruments, colorful flags, and elaborate steaming delicacies. Soon the canteen was unrecognizable, filled with props, food, and Tok Toks dancing excitedly to the raucous wedding music. Our culture demands that we share our joy with everyone on this special date, the tribal leader explained to Umka. I hope our marriage brings you as much happiness as it will us. Umka watched everything with curious and amused eyes. The exotic ceremony was a rare and special event that broke the routine of the season. He noticed some other cantina goers also excitedly enjoying the unusual party. Accept this slug pudding as our gift of gratitude. The Tok Tok groom solemnly handed it to Umka. May your establishment always prosper. Thank you very much, Umka replied with a slight frown upon receiving the strange gift. I wish the couple much happiness. The party was at its peak when a large unknown ship unexpectedly docked at the station, causing a stir. Its design and insignia were unknown and its purpose a mystery. Umka frowned, her curiosity piqued. The canteen returned to its usual routine after the Tok Tok's match. Umka was cleaning the counter, watching the customers come and go. He noticed an inconspicuous human sitting alone in a corner, drinking slowly. Something about him caught Umka's attention, perhaps it was his watchful, wary gaze, as if he were always on the alert. Suddenly, the cantina door opened with a bang and a group of tall, muscular aliens entered. They were Kalu Kamskis, a species known for its cultural rigidity and difficulty in adapting. They noisily settled down at a large table, demanding drinks. Umka approached to serve them. Welcome to my canteen. What can I serve you? The leader of the group, a particularly large and intimidating Kalu Kamsku, growled. Bring us your strongest drink, Ixian, and quickly. Umka nodded politely and hurried to prepare the drinks. He noticed that the other customers seemed uncomfortable with the Kalu Kamskis presence, some even hurriedly leaving the cantina. When Umka served the drinks, the Kalu Kamsku leader tasted it and immediately spat it out. That's dirty water compared to the drinks on our planet. I demand better. Umka tried to calm him down. I apologize, sir. This is the strongest drink we have. Maybe if you tell me what you're looking for, I can try to replicate it. Kalu Kamsku stood up, furious. You dare insult us, Ixian? We Kalu Kamskis tolerate no disrespect. The tension in the canteen was palpable. Other customers cowered, fearing the situation would escalate to violence. It was then that the discreet human stood up and calmly approached the Kalu Kamskis table. Gentlemen, I believe there is a misunderstanding here, he said in a placating tone. I'm sure the owner didn't mean to offend them, Maybe we can find a peaceful solution. The Kalu Kamsku leader turned to the human, growling. And who are you to meddle, human? My name is Carl, the man replied calmly. I have had the pleasure of visiting your beautiful planet and tasting your incomparable drinks. 
I understand your frustration, but I assure you that no disrespect was intended. The Kalukamskis seemed to calm down a little at Carl's words. He continued, How about if I work with the owner to try and recreate a drink closer to his taste? I have some experience with interstellar concoctions. The Kalukamsku leader considered for a moment before slowly nodding. Very well, human. But it better be good, or there will be consequences. Carl smiled and walked to the counter with Umka. They quickly got to work, mixing various liquids and essences. After a few tries, Carl served the Kalu Kamsku leader a steaming cup. The alien sniffed the drink suspiciously before taking a sip. His eyes widened and he let out a growl of approval. Now that's a drink worthy of a Kalu Kamsku. Maybe you're not so bad after all, Ixian. Umka sighed in relief, thanking Carl. The tension in the canteen dissipated and customers returned to their activities. But Unka couldn't help but wonder about the mysterious human who so skillfully averted disaster. Who was he and what brought him to the station? Over the next few days, Carl became a regular customer at the canteen. He chatted amiably with Umka and the other customers, but always maintained an air of mystery about his past and his goals. The presence of the Kalukamskis also became more frequent although they seemed to have developed a grudging respect for Umka and his cantina after the incident. However, their integration with the other species was still tense and awkward. One day, as Umka was pouring Carl a drink, he finally asked, So what brings a human like you to a space station like this? You seem to have an interesting story. Carl smiled enigmatically. Let's just say I'm here to help maintain peace and understanding between species. This incident with the Kalukamskis is just one example of the many challenges that arise in such a diverse place. Umka nodded, intrigued. Well, I'm glad you're here. Your intervention certainly prevented a disaster the other day. Sometimes all it takes is a little empathy and communication, Carl responded. But it's not always that simple. There are many long-standing tensions and conflicts between the species that frequent this station. It's a delicate balance. At that moment, an alarm sounded at the station, interrupting their conversation. A voice announced over the communication system. Alert! Unauthorized Zorgan battleship detected approaching station. All residents, stay alert and await instructions. Unka and Carl exchanged a worried look. Zorgans were known as an aggressive and conquering species, always seeking to expand their territory. What could they want at Curia Trade Station? The cantina erupted in a buzz of fear and speculation. Umka tried to calm the customers, but the tension was palpable. Carl looked thoughtful, as if he was calculating possible outcomes and strategies. Suddenly, the cantina door opened and a group of heavily armed Zorgans marched in. They were tall reptilian creatures with bright green scales and piercing yellow eyes. The group leader swept the cantina with his gaze before announcing in an authoritative tone, this station is now under the control of the Zorgan Empire. All of you are our prisoners until further notice. Customers panicked, some trying to flee, others cowering in fear. The Kalu Kamskis stood up, growling defiantly at the Zorgans. It looked like a battle was about to break out. But before the situation could escalate, Carl stepped forward, raising his hands in a placating gesture. Lord Zorgans, we can certainly resolve this peacefully, this is a neutral trading station, not a military threat. The Zorgan leader turned to Carl, hissing. And who are you, human, to question the Zorgan Empire's actions? Carl smiled calmly. Someone who believes in diplomacy rather than brute force. I'm sure we can reach an agreement that benefits everyone. The Zorgan laughed disdainfully. Diplomacy? The Zorgan Empire does not negotiate. We conquer and dominate. The tension in the canteen was unbearable. Umka watched apprehensively, fearing the worst. The Kalu Kamskis seemed ready to attack at any moment, while the other customers cowered in terror. But Carl remained unshakable. He looked directly into the Zorgan leader's eyes and said in a calm but firm tone, Then perhaps it is time for the Zorgan Empire to learn a new approach. Violence only breeds more violence. But cooperation. That is a powerful force. The Zorgan looked disconcerted for a moment, as if it was unaccustomed to being challenged so directly. He stared at Carl for a long moment before finally growling, You are brave, human, 
or perhaps just foolish. But perhaps there is some wisdom in your words. Let's discuss your terms, then. Carl nodded, smiling. Excellent. I'm sure we can find a mutually beneficial solution. He turned to Umka and winked. I think we're going to need some drinks for this negotiation. Something strong, preferably. Umka shook his head in wonder, already heading towards the bar. He didn't know who exactly this Carl was, but one thing was certain. Life at Curia Trade Station had just gotten a lot more interesting with him around. Umka watched intently as Carl approached the Zorgan's table, her heart beating fast. The entire cantina seemed to hold its breath, waiting to see what would happen next. Carl sat calmly across from the Zorgan leader, his face a mask of tranquility. So let's talk. The Zorgan hissed, its yellow eyes glowing dangerously. Speak then, human, but be quick. My patience is short. Carl nodded. I see. I'll get straight to the point then. What exactly does the Zorgan Empire hope to gain by taking this station? The Zorgan leader seemed surprised by the direct question. Win? We win what we want. That's the Zorgan way. Yes, but there is certainly a reason behind it, Carl pressed. Resources? Strategic location? Or maybe it's a matter of reputation? The Zorgan narrowed his eyes. You are perceptive for a human. Yes, the location of this station is of strategic interest to the Empire. Controlling it would give us a significant advantage. Carl nodded thoughtfully. I see. But have you considered that perhaps there is a way to gain this advantage without resorting to brute force? What do you mean? The Zorgan asked, looking intrigued despite himself. This station thrives on commerce and cooperation, Carl explained. If the Zorgan Empire became a partner instead of a conqueror, you could have access to all the benefits of the station's location without the burden of managing it directly. The Zorgan leader hissed thoughtfully. Continues. As Carl and the Zorgan continued their discussion, Umka couldn't help but marvel at the human skill. He was actually making progress with a species known for its aggressiveness and intransigence. Looking around the cantina, Umka could see that the others were also watching the interaction intently. The Kalu Kamsku seemed especially interested, their eyes following Carl's every move. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, Carl and the Zorgan leader stood up. To Umka's surprise, they shook hands, or rather, Carl's hand and Zorgan's claw. We have a deal, the Zorgan announced, his voice booming through the silent cantina. The Zorgan Empire will enter into a partnership with the Curia trade station. Our ships will protect the station in exchange for preferential trade rights. A collective sigh of relief went through the room, followed by tentative applause. Umka shook his head in wonder. Somehow, against all odds, Carl had managed it. As the Zorgans retreated from the cantina, Carl approached the counter, looking tired but satisfied. Umka immediately served him a drink. That was incredible, Umka said, admiration evident in her voice. How did you do it? Carl took a sip of his drink and smiled. Years of experience dealing with interspecies conflict. I've learned that often all it takes is a little empathy and creativity to find a solution that benefits everyone. Umka nodded slowly. Your experience? Does this have anything to do with why you're here at the station? Carl's expression became serious. Partly, yes. See, I used to be a soldier, fighting in interstellar wars. But after a while, I realized that violence only breeds more violence. So, I decided to dedicate my life to promoting peace and understanding between species. Umka felt a surge of respect for the human in front of him. That's admirable, and it looks like you're doing a great job so far. Carl smiled gratefully. Thank you, Umka. But there is still a lot of work to be done. Conflicts like this are common in places like Curia Trade Station, where so many different cultures meet. At that moment, an alarm sounded throughout the station, interrupting their conversation. Umka frowned, worried. What will happen now? A voice sounded over the calm system tense and urgent. Attention all residents. A Zalarian refugee ship has just emerged from a nearby wormhole and is requesting permission to dock. Their ship is damaged and they say they are fleeing a war in their home system. Umka and Carl exchanged a look. The Zalarians were known to be a peaceful species, 
but their sudden arrival would certainly shake things up at the station. Looks like you might have another crisis on your hands, Unka commented. Carl sighed, but there was a gleam of determination in his eyes. Well, I'd better go meet them then. I have a feeling they're going to need a friend now. He stood up, leaving his half-empty drink on the counter. Thanks for the talk, Unka. And the drink. Something tells me I'm going to need to keep a clear head for what comes next. With that, he headed for the door, ready to face the next challenge. Unka watched him go, feeling a mixture of worry and hope. With Carl around, perhaps there would be a chance to keep the peace on the station after all. But the arrival of the Zalarian refugees was a grim reminder that the balance was always fragile. Umka could only hope that Carl's diplomatic skill was up to the challenge. For the next few hours, the station was a whirlwind of activity. The Zalarian refugees were allowed to dock and were quickly directed to temporary accommodation. But their presence caused unrest among some of the other resident species, who feared the newcomers would overwhelm the station's already limited resources. Carl worked tirelessly to calm tempers and find solutions. He mediated disputes, negotiated resource-sharing agreements, and generally did everything he could to ensure that the Zalarians were welcomed and integrated into life on the station. Unka watched from her vantage point in the cantina, pouring drinks and listening to the latest gossip. He couldn't help but be impressed by Carl's dedication to the cause of peace. But there was also a growing sense of unrest. Tensions were rising despite Carl's best efforts. Some residents began to openly question whether the Zalarian presence was sustainable in the long term. Everything came to a head a few days later when a fight broke out in the market between a Zalarian and a Kalu Kamsku. Apparently, it had been a dispute over the last batch of a rare spice, but it quickly escalated into accusations and racial slurs. Carl quickly intervened, separating the combatants and trying to calm the situation. But the damage was already done. Soon, Groups of Zalarians and Kalu Kamskis were clashing in the streets, demanding that the other species be removed from the station. Uncle watched with a sinking heart as Carl ran from one confrontation to another, desperately trying to keep the peace. But even he seemed to be reaching his limit. Finally, after a particularly tense day, Carl entered the canteen looking completely exhausted. He collapsed onto a stool at the counter, burying his head in his hands. I don't know what to do anymore, Umka he admitted, his voice tired. I've tried everything, but it seems like the harder I try, the more things fall apart. Umka felt a surge of sympathy for the man. He poured Carl a strong drink and placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. You're doing your best, he assured. No one could ask for more than that. Carl took a sip of his drink, looking thoughtful. Maybe my best isn't enough. Maybe... Maybe it's time for me to accept that not all conflicts can be resolved. Unka frowned. What do you mean? Carl sighed. I'm starting to think that maybe the only way to restore peace to the station is... If the Zalarians leave, they could settle somewhere else, start over. Unka was surprised to hear Carl, of all people, suggest such a thing. But where would they go? They fled a war. The station is all they have. I know. Carl said, looking tormented. Believe me, I do not suggest this lightly. But if they stay, I fear the violence will only increase. It may be a matter of choosing the lesser of two evils. Unka didn't know what to say. He could see the logic in Carl's argument, but the idea still made him uncomfortable. Would it really be right to turn one's back on the Zalarians in their time of need? Before he could respond, another alarm sounded throughout the station but this one was different louder, more urgent. Umka felt a shiver run down her spine. The voice on the communication system sounded almost panicked. Attention all residents. A fleet of Zorgan warships has just emerged from hyperspace near the station. They are armed and demanding that we hand over the Zalarian refugees immediately. Umka and Carl looked at each other in horror. It seemed that the decision regarding the fate of the Zalarians might no longer be theirs. What would happen next was anyone's guess. But one thing was certain Curia trade station was about to face its biggest challenge yet. The canteen was strangely quiet, the usual buzz replaced by soft murmurs and the occasional clink of glasses. Unka looked around, taking in the customers' faces some looked relieved, others thoughtful, but everyone seemed to be processing the tumultuous events of the past few days. 
he himself felt a whirlwind of emotions. Relief that the immediate crisis is over, certainly, but also a sense of admiration and inspiration for the way Carl had handled the situation. Speaking of the human, Carl entered the canteen at that moment, looking tired but satisfied. He sat down at the counter with a sigh, offering Umka a tired smile. Well, that was intense, he commented, gratefully accepting the drink Umka offered him. You did it, Umka said, admiration evident in her voice. Honestly, I don't know how you did it. Facing the Zorgans like that, negotiating a deal. It was incredible. Carl shrugged modestly. I just did what had to be done. We couldn't let them take the Zalarians. But we also couldn't risk war. Diplomacy was the only option. Umka nodded thoughtfully. Carl's ability to mediate and find peaceful solutions was truly impressive. He wondered how many other crises like this the human had faced in his travels. As if reading her mind, Carl began to speak. You know, situations like this, they make me think of all the things I've seen, all the places I've visited. Each experience taught me something, changed me in some way. Umka leaned forward, intrigued. What kind of things did you see? And so, Carl began to tell his stories. He spoke of exotic planets and wondrous species, of strange cultures and fascinating customs. He described vast interstellar cities and small frontier colonies, each with its own challenges and opportunities. But more than the places themselves, it was the lessons he had learned that truly captivated Umka. Carl talked about the importance of empathy and understanding, of trying to see things from someone else's perspective. He described how every encounter, every interaction, had the potential to teach something valuable, if we were open to it. Traveling through space. It's more than just seeing new things, Carl mused. It's about allowing these experiences to change us, to make us grow. It's about taking these lessons with us and applying them to our lives. Umka nodded slowly the words resonating deep within him. He thought about his own life, about the choices he had made. Managing the cantina had been rewarding in its own way, but he suddenly wondered if perhaps there was more he could do, more he could learn. In the days that followed, Umka found herself spending more and more time with Carl, listening to his stories and absorbing his wisdom. The human had a way of making even the most mundane things seem fascinating, infusing each moment with a sense of wonder and possibility. And it wasn't just Umka. Others at the station also began to gravitate toward Carl, drawn to his calm presence and unique perspectives. He became something of a central figure, a point of stability in a place defined by constant change. Even the Zalarians, still adjusting to their new life on the station, seemed to find comfort in Carl's words. He spent hours with them, listening to their stories and offering gentle advice. Under his guidance, they slowly began to integrate into the station's diverse community. But even as peace returned, there was an underlying feeling of anticipation. Rumors began to circulate about more human ships on the way, drawn by reports of Carl's diplomatic skill. Some speculated that the Curia trade station could become a hub for human expansion into space, a focal point for a new era of exploration and interspecies cooperation. Umka wasn't sure what to think about that. On the one hand, the prospect of change was exciting. But on the other, he couldn't help but worry about what this would mean for the station's delicate balance. They had barely survived one crisis were they ready for another. He expressed these concerns to Carl during one of their many conversations. The human looked thoughtful, taking a sip of his drink before responding. Change is always scary, he said. But it's also inevitable. The key is to embrace it, shape it. Make it a force for good. Umka frowned. But what if it doesn't work out? What if the arrival of more humans just causes more problems? Carl smiled gently. So we deal with these problems when they arise. Together. That's what places like the Curia trade station are. At the end of the day, a place where different species can come together, learn from each other, grow together. He placed a hand on Umka's shoulder, squeezing reassuringly. Do not be afraid of the future, my friend. Embrace it. Who knows what wonders it may bring. Umka nodded slowly, feeling some of her anxiety dissipate. Carl was right. Whatever the future held, they would face it together. In the days that followed, the station buzzed with preparations for the arrival of the new ships. Accommodations were prepared, 
supplies were stocked, and numerous meetings were held to discuss protocols and contingency plans. Through it all, Carl was a constant presence, offering advice and reassurance where needed. He worked tirelessly to ensure the transition was as smooth as possible, serving as a vital link between station residents and newcomers. And then, finally, the big day arrived. Umka watched from the cantina windows as the ships docked, her heart racing with a mix of nervousness and anticipation. He saw the doors open, saw the first hesitant figures emerge humans, looking around with wide-eyed wonder. Carl was there to welcome them, of course, his warm smile and open posture immediately putting them at ease. He guided them through the station, making introductions and offering explanations with practiced ease. In the days that followed, the canteen became a central hub for new arrivals. They gathered there to share meals and stories, to ask questions and seek advice. And Umka was right in the middle of it all, serving drinks and offering a friendly ear. It was during one of these sessions that one of the new humans, a young woman with bright eyes and a long braid, approached Umka with an unexpected proposal. I've been talking to Carl, she said, her voice vibrating with excitement about his travels, all the amazing things he saw. And I thought, why not write about it? Why not share these stories with others? Umka tilted his head, intrigued. Like a book, you mean? The girl nodded eagerly. Exactly. Think about it a guide for future travelers, full of advice and insights from someone who has actually been there. It could help so many people, inspire so many others to explore, to learn, to grow. Umka considered the idea. There was merit in her, he had to admit. Carl's experiences were certainly valuable, why not share them with the world? He mentioned the idea to Carl the next time he saw him. To his surprise, the human seemed hesitant. I don't know, he said, scratching the back of his head. I mean, I'm not a writer, and who would want to read about my adventures anyway? Umka snorted. Are you kidding? Carl, the people here hang on your every word. Your stories, your lessons, they mean something. They can help so many people out there, just like they helped the people here. Carl looked thoughtful, but Umka could see a gleam of interest in his eyes. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's time for me to share what I've learned. Pass on the torch, so to speak. And so, the project began. In the days and weeks that followed, Carl and the young human girl, whose name, Umka discovered, was Lena spent countless hours together documenting Carl's travels and experiences. Umka often joined them, offering encouragement and the occasional snack. It was a sometimes difficult process. Reliving some of Carl's most traumatic memories, in particular, proved to be emotionally draining. But Carl persisted, determined to paint an honest and complete portrait of his journey. And what a journey it had been. Listening to Carl recount everything from his hesitant early days as a young soldier to his numerous skirmishes and negotiations as a veteran diplomat, Umka could not help but marvel at all the human had accomplished. But more than the events themselves, it was the lessons behind them that really stood out. The insights Carl had gained, the universal truths he had discovered about the nature of conflict and cooperation, about the power of empathy and understanding. These were the real jewels, the real treasures of his travels. And now, they would be shared with countless others. Lena was right this book could change lives. It could shape the future. As the project progressed, Umka found herself reflecting more and more on her own life. Hearing about Carl's adventures, about all the wonderful and terrible things he had seen. It made Umka realize how much of the universe he hadn't yet experienced. He loved the canteen. He loved the life he had built at Curia Trade Station. But suddenly, it seemed... Small, somehow. Limited. There was a whole universe out there, waiting to be explored, waiting to be lived. He expressed these thoughts to Carl one night as they sat in the canteen after a long day of writing. The human listened intently, a small smile playing on his lips. Looks like someone got the travel bug, he commented, his eyes shining with a mix of amusement and understanding. Umka sighed. Maybe. I don't know. I just... Hearing all your stories made me realize how much I haven't seen yet. How much I haven't done yet. Carl nodded, his smile becoming softer. I understand. Believe me, I've been where you are. That itch, that urge to just leave, see what's out there. 
It never really goes away. He leaned forward, his gaze fixed on Umka. But you have to ask yourself, what do you really want? Is it adventure you seek or meaning? Umka frowned, considering the question. I, I'm not sure, maybe a little of both. Carl nodded again. Then maybe you don't need to go anywhere. Maybe you're already right where you need to be. He gestured around the cantina, at the eclectic mix of species gathered there. Look around you, Umka. Look at all you've built here. You've created a place where people from all corners of the galaxy can come together, share stories, learn from each other. Isn't this an adventure of its own? Umka blinked in surprise. He had never thought of it that way before. But Carl was right the canteen, the station. They were more than just a place, more than just a job. They were a vital part of the great tapestry of life, a point of connection in the vast fabric of space. And he, Umka, was the center of it. He was what held it all together, what made it all work. It wasn't a grand, epic adventure, perhaps, but it was an adventure nonetheless, and one that mattered. He looked at Carl, a new understanding dawning in his eyes. You're right, he said softly. I think, I think I'm already right where I need to be. Carl smiled, that warm, knowing smile that seemed to hold all the secrets of the universe. Good, I'm glad. The universe needs people like you, Umka. People who build bridges, not walls. He raised his glass in a silent toast. To the bridge builder. Umka raised her own glass, a smile spreading across her face. To the bridge builder. They drank, the liquid burning pleasantly as it went down. And for a moment, everything felt right in the universe. But even as they savored the moment, Umka couldn't help but wonder what the future held. The arrival of humans had brought changes, certainly, but what other changes were coming?